What's up, guys? It's your boy Luke. We're making a uh, Morgan dollar coin ring today. And uh, we're going to do this without using a coin ring stretcher. We're just going to use some dies. It's a smaller ring, so I'm able to do that. Um, we're making a size seven and a half with the heads out and polished. So it's a tiny ring. So there's some things to take into consideration when you're making a smaller band ring. And the first thing is, how big do you want the ring to be on the person's finger? <clears throat> now, I'm assuming it's a smaller finger because it's a seven and a half, which is pretty small. So I'm gonna make a smaller band. And in order to make a smaller band, I'm gonna punch a bigger hole in it. So let's go ahead come over here we'll do a little hole punching right down here Get some lights on and I feel like we're gonna go big we're just gonna go with the biggest punch um, really <clears throat> since it's a heads out coin ring um, there's not a lot of detail in the center of the coin other than I mean there's just not a lot there the tail side there's a lot of cool stuff to keep but the head side um, there's not a lot so a big punch isn't really going to do any damage to this uh, visually it's actually going to make it a little more stunning and then the inside will be really cool looking so, let's do this. I'm going to use a Jason's Works Punch. It's a three-quarter size hole we're going with. Move you guys down a tad bit more so you can see a little better. Uh, this is an automatic centering punch. So, all I have to do is set the coin in there. And actually, normally I don't have to put this in first, but because it doesn't fit in a hole because it's such a big punch. We're going to put it in first. And as I tighten it down, it'll grab that coin and center it on its own. And we can see in there, looks centered. So this gets a little bit loud, so you have headphones on or something, you might want to take them off. <clears throat> and there is our center. And we'll just set that aside for now. So what we see there is the detail we will have on the outside of the ring. So I like to clean up as I go, kind of keeps me a little more organized in the head. And then we'll come over here. two parts now I'm going to take a Dremel tool and clean out that cut part because the cut side has quite a bit of just issues flaws you may or may not be able to see them in there but I want to make that super clean. This will help it from uh, splitting or cracking during the next process. Any kind of flaws in the metal could cause issues later on down the road. 
So we're going to jump on them ahead of time. Sand it a little further. It's a little 2000 grit paper. And I'll finish it with some 40 grit steel wool. So zero, 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 zero grit steel wool. And I need to ingest coffee. That's always part of the ring making process is has some kind of beverage, beverage available. So now you might be able to see how Shiny that inside hole is. We polished it up nice and good. I'm give it an eye test. Make sure it looks good. Looks good. Clean up my air. And we're going to go on to the next step, which is heating it up. Heat it up. And then we're gonna punch it in the water to cool it off real quick and that'll make it nice and pliable. We'll make it nice and bendy. Bend, bendable metal. Dry it off with a towel over here. Got hanging, hanging. So we're good to go. So we're gonna rotate over here. Boom. Just like that. I like this little tripod action. It's pretty sweet. It's a little higher so you can see more action. You can see more action downward. All right. So the next step is we're going to start folding it. And I have a plethora of dies. It's going to be heads out, so the tails will be up. I'm going to probably use this cone here. So we're in the die. Tail side up. Cone in. The barbarian. Right before I get to the point where I press stop make sure it's level make sure that I got the right side up we do and that begins the process got a little fold started we're going to continue in the same die I'm just switching out to the biggest cone that I have. And that is as far as I can go. I'm sucked up 
to the cone. And we have a cone shape, which is the beginning step. So this is generally when you would go to the stretcher and stretch it out so that you could reduce and make it the right size and all that. But because it's such a small ring, even if we want a bigger hole, we probably wouldn't need to go to the stretcher. Just because right now this hole is so big that it's probably off the charts. It just falls right off my ring stretcher. So there's no need to do any stretching. We're just going to be doing some reducing. So this is where I'm going to wrap it with some Teflon tape. And we'll do that on my lap. Get on my lap. It's just easier and quicker for me on the lap. I'm going to give it 15, 20 wraps. This acts as a protectant of the details of the coin. So we don't want to press any of the details down. And this will, uh, it kind of, once it gets squished, it kind of turns into a plastic. So it's almost like a plastic protective cover. So we're all wrapped up. And go back up here. Now I'm going to use some Swedish dyes. They're from Sweden. And I'm going to put them in the big reeded side up into the dye. And I'm going to use just a Pusher. I'm going to protect the reed with a pad, cotton pad. I'm use a little cotton pad. So I'll set that up there, put that up there. Make sure I am in there right. I don't want to push the reed down. Um, improperly. This die is not going to go very far down. It's just a starter die. So I'm going to go to the next size down, which is the one I like to call the number two. My press is just a little bit off as far as uh, as far as being level. So I rotate as I go because I am very aware of that. So I know how I know how my tool works, but if anybody else would use my my machine, they'd be like, hey dude, this thing's wonky. I'd be like, I know. You gotta know what you're doing on this thing. So basically what this is doing is it's reducing the top side to bring it closer to where the bottom side was. So it's less it's less at a slant. We're making it more of a slight slope, I guess you could call it. So now we're gonna to go to the old, the old number three, I like to call it. The old three. Swap out the pad, put the three in there. So now you can kind of see that some of the details coming through that tape. You can see the date, uh, 1921 upside down. Uh, it's still some white coming through here. Whoa, did you see that? Did you see that? That was crazy. Let me tape this back up here. I'm, I have my phone taped, taped on here. Um, because it's not the perfect, it's not the perfect tripod for what I'm doing, but you know, it works. That's a trick. See? No harm. No harm done. I'm done with that die. I'm going to go to the next die. But you can see how this, uh, Teflon tape acts as like a plastic. It's, uh, a good, a good 
coating there. But I am going to put some more tape on it real quick on my lap. But I don't need to move you guys around to see that. You've seen how to do it. You know how to put tape on a coin. You put the tape on the coin. Alright. So we kind of wrapped it up some more. We're going to put it in the next die. And continue to shrink this thing down. I'm going to shrink it down quite a bit. We're going to the old, you got it, number four. Number four. Alrighty. Make sure I am centered. Feels right. Push this down. Pop it all the way. Now you can see that's really a protective, plastic protective coating. And we'll just keep going because we're making a pretty small ring. So now, number five. That's awesome. As we can go with the number five. Let's see where we are size wise. I'm sure we got quite a ways to go. This thing's sitting at a size 12 right now. End goal seven and a half. Number six. The old number six. This will finish this Swedish die and we'll go to the next one. Basically, I'm just shrinking the coin ring, shrinking it down from fatter to smaller. I'm doing it slowly. So that was a size 12 before. That brought us all the way down to a 10. So we're not too far off. Um, not too far off at all. Ring looks good. I'm going to give it a little more Teflon tape, a little more protection. You cannot protect the detail enough. I don't think. I've never, I haven't overdone it before. I never overprotected the reed or the edge, the details, any of that good stuff. And then we're going to be on number seven. The old seven. Go halfway down and see where that puts us size wise. Go right about there and see where that's at. Feels, feels about close. So we're at a nine, which is perfect for what we're doing. I like to keep it a couple sizes bigger than our goal before the next step. Clean up my area. And the next step is just kind of check in. We got a good protection of plastic, so I'm going to keep it rocking. I'm going to just kind of look in the die where we sit on the smaller side, which that gap right there, when level, is probably about a half inch. So I'm going to turn, put the bigger side, the reeded side, down here. And I'm going to press it down until we're at that half inch gap. Until we're at that half inch, the same gap that we had on the other side. And that's just to kind of bring the outside, both edges, to the same point, the same diameter. About where we were it's about the half inch so all that did was made this side the same size side same diameter as this side um, so I'm gonna actually take the tape off so you can see better because I see there's some silver shavings coming up 
So we're basically just trying to get it to a ring shape right now. Now there's some silver coming off, which happens when you press down this far. So you just want to make sure that you get that off of there because if you don't, it will maybe flake off and then end up pressing into the reed or the edge or pressing into something else, which will cause some later damage. All right. So now we're going to check the small side and see how close we are to where our actual goal is. So our end goal is a seven and a half. Right now we're at a six and a half. But there's a lot of reed to remove on this inside. The reeded edge doesn't stretch or anything. So you can see through the coin to see how much reed there is. It's probably about a full size and a half. So we actually want to reduce this a little bit more. But before I do that, I'm going to add a reed to the non-reeded side. But right before I do that, I want to just kind of clean it up so it's nice and flat and looks good because we're not going to have to do any more uh, sanding or anything to this, this side. So we're going to go over here. Back to the Dremel tool. And I'm just going to kind of kind of round it off a little bit because it's pretty square and I'm going to kind of flatten it so that when I hit that reed it's got a good a good side to hit And also, had we have gone with like a smaller punch to begin with, this thing would be so wide, it would be so much wider, that somebody with a seven and a half finger probably wouldn't want to wear it. Um, it would just be too bulky. Your knuckles, you may, if it was too big, too wide on a smaller hand, you may not be able to work your, work your knuckles properly and whatnot. Paper here. Again, you gotta, gotta stay hydrated. steel wool all right now we're ready to add a reed to the side
we're going to use this cool tool called a re-reader. Kind of, kind of fitting. It's got a bunch of reeds cut into it. So that I basically just center it and press it down. A nice press and then I rotate it quarter of turn a nice press rotate a quarter turn and repeat time all right now it gave us a really cool read on this side so now we're gonna finish the um, the reduction process with the die. So I'm going to actually heat this up real quick so that we're nice and pliable. We're just going to reduce it a little bit more to uh, about maybe a full size more because I think we're sitting at Six and a half, our end goal is a seven and a half. So I want to reduce this to about a six. So we're going to reduce it about a half size after I heat it up. But I will do that over here. There's no need to move the camera. A ton. Dip it in your dip it on your tongue. Just dry it off. Alright, so gonna wrap it in some Teflon. It's a smaller diameter, so it's much quicker and easier to do right now. 20 wraps just takes couple flicks of the finger you know done just like that so we're gonna reduce both sides because right now they're the same same diameter so we're gonna reduce both sides um, a half size Probably right there. Same thing on the other side. It's probably right there. And you can see, looks like both sides are equal. Let's see where we are size wise. Hopefully around six, six and a half. Um, I can't see. 
Ooh. We're at five. So we got a lot of read to reduce. We're at a five. We need a seven and a half. Two and a half sizes to reduce. We can do that. This thing's got a lot of read on it. There's a lot of read going on here, folks. So we're going to come down here to the silver scrap drawer. We can take all this tape off. There's no need for it. Put it in the scrap pile. A piece of silver flaking off. Let's get that off of here. Sweet. All right, there's a lot of reed there on the inside to take off. So we could probably do this. Two and a half sizes. Let's go. This tool takes shavings off and it's just taking it right off of this part. You can see that's real silver now, just right on the top, top rim. We're not taking any detail off the inside of this coin. We're just taking some silver off. There's still quite a bit to go. I can feel it. I can feel the rim. Um, basically, you also want to do this just because if you don't, there's just going to be, this will be the highest point of the, the coin ring. So when you wear it, like I can feel that reed right now. It's basically just right up against the knuckle, but <clears throat> it would just hold on at that one point rather than, you know, connecting to the whole finger. Still quite a bit. Alright, let's see how close we are. Let's see this plastic one I can see a little better. So we're at a six and a half. The goal's a seven and a half. And there's quite a bit of reed left in there. You can almost see it from this side. How much there is left in here. There's quite a lip. So I'm going to remove that whole lip. And you can also see that quite a bit has been removed from the reed. And this ring's going to Pendleton, Oregon. Staying in the state. Love it. getting real close with the reed being off so I'm hoping we're getting real close with the size being right so we're close to a seven now Half size off that should be easy to reduce here or not reduce but to get that metal off of here half size it's not a lot And we still have to do just a tiny bit of sanding to the inside, so that'll reduce not much. It's just a tad bit, but take that into consideration. I think we're pretty close. Seven and a quarter. With this little tiny bit of reed, I feel still right here. There's a tiny lip. I'm catching. That 
should put us right where we want to be. Feels right. We're just a tad bit shy of seven and a half. So that's good. We're going to sand this a tad bit. Just going to go one or two more rotations here. And then we will come over here. Hey, how you doing? Come back over here. We're going to now sand that part. So we're going to sand down the shiny part. And again, I'm not going to hit any of the inside detail of the coin. I don't want to mess up the detail. It's hot. It's hot. Uh, it's boiling my fingers right now. The blood's boiling inside my fingers. Lots of friction, yo. This is going to have a polished finish, opposed to an antique finish, which I do with most of the Morgan dollars. So we'll do that. That'll just take a few minutes. And then we're going to steel wool this whole thing off and just Kind of get rid of all the gunk that's on it right now. It's coffee. So get rid of all the the burn, the fire marks. Should shine it up pretty close to close to new. Pretty close to new. So this is our originally original readed side. This is the side that we added a read. See, I taped down the phone. It's almost, we're almost there, buddy. We're almost there. We're going to make it. Here's the inside detail so far. <clears throat> Once we polish it, we might not be able to see that detail. It's kind of hard to capture 
the detail of these things once they're polished up. But if you follow me on Instagram at Luke's Coin Art, one word, Luke's Coin Art, I take photographs of my art when I'm done and post them there. This will be one piece that we'll post up there. We'll post some photographs. So you can see the final product kind of more professionally photographed rather than just my camera taking it on video for you guys. So we're real close. We just need to polish this guy up. And to do that, we'll use a Dremel piece for the inside. Inside looks really nice. So now let's do the outside. We'll do that. At the actual tool. What's up? Let's see what this thing looks like, shall we? Ooh. That's pretty. It's real pretty. See the date? It's hard to capture because it's so shiny, it's reflecting. But follow me on Instagram, Luke's Coin Art, one word. I will get some good pictures of this, but it's uh, super, super duper. Super duper, super duper sexy. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.